All right, we're in our second week of the series called uh, Entering the Promised Land. It's on the, uh, the book of Joshua, on the person of Joshua, and how God used him afterwards, after Moses, right? Remember, Moses was the one that got the people out of Egypt, <coughs> brought them out, right? They were walking through the wilderness for how long? How many years? 40, 40. 40 years, right? And they didn't make it into the promised land, right? Because they disobeyed. They worship idols. God hates it when we worship idols, right? God hates it. God hates it. And God said, hey, because of that, you will not make it into the promised land. Your children will, right? 40 years, y'all are going to wander. And then once y'all die off, then your children and your grandchildren will be allowed. So God gets upset. A lot of times we all just talk about, oh, God is love. God is love, right? But hey, God gets upset. And we freak out when all of a sudden when God's hand, boom, hits, right? Like, wait a minute, I thought God was love. Why is all this happening to me? Well, sometimes God has to deal with us, right? Sometimes God has to give us a little spanking to get us back on track. If you're a believer, if you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to follow Jesus. You need to follow his ways and you need to follow his rules. That's what it's all about, right? And if you don't, <laughs> God will deal with you. He do, right? God's going to come. <laughs> God's going to come and tell you, you're next, right? <laughs> Today, we're going to take a look at an obstacle. How can we overcome an obstacle to enjoying the life of the promised land, right? To enjoying that abundant life that Jesus told us, he promised us, right? Jesus said, if you follow me, I will give you abundant life. He said, okay. That's the promised land that the children of Israel went into, right? But there's an obstacle that comes into our life that really hinders us, that, that, that stops us from enjoying life to the fullest the way the Lord intended it. And that is fear. Anybody know that guy? <laughs> Macaulay Culkin, right? Well, th this is his face when he first found out, right, that his family had left him. His family had gone and he finds out, Ah, I'm home alone, right? Ah. But did you notice that you can tell when somebody's afraid? When there's fear in somebody, you can tell just by looking at their face, right? That girl looks terrified, right? She looks afraid, right? Some of you, some of you that are from the west side, you know, whenever you were gonna get into a fight or something, and you're you're facing your opponent, and you see that in their face, you're like, Oh, I got this. <laughs> right? I got this. He's afraid of me already, right? But you got to be careful because when somebody's afraid and they're cornered, right, Brother Castillo? They'll go out, man. They might go all out. They might go crazy on you, right? And they, they might find strength where they didn't know that they had it, right? But you can usually tell, you know, um, some people are afraid of some different stuff, right? People are afraid of all kinds of different stuff. Some people, did you know, are afraid of the future. Man, our future doesn't look good at all, right? We take a look at uh, uh, the economy, right? Man, are we going to have gasoline next month, right? Are we going to have eggs? When eggs went up, I was really panicking, you know? It's like, oh, my God, right? Are we even going to have a country the way things are going, right? That Russia and China, they're coming and Joe Biden's falling to the left and right on his face, right? It's like, are we even going to have a country, right? Some of us are walking around with a sense that, man, the future is bleak, man. The future doesn't look too good, right? And so some people are afraid of even tr just trying new things, right? Some people don't want to get married. I don't, I don't want to get married, man. That's a new thing. I don't know. I don't know. Some people don't even want to get a job. Not a new job. I'm talking about a job just in general, right? Some people, I'd rather stay home. I'd rather go live with my parents, right? I lived with my parents. I was 38 years old when I, when I finally met my wife, Sandra, right? <laughs> Mom, y'all didn't mind, right? Y'all did not mind. <laughs> I was 38, right? Some people don't want to get a job. Some people that you know are afraid of social interactions, of just meeting people, being around people. How can you live like that? You, you got to live in a room by yourself, right? Somewhere you're, a, I guess that's what you call a, a, a hermit, right? Some people, sometimes people are so afraid of stuff that they quit everything too fast. Have you ever noticed that? It say in business, you take on a bus business adventure, right? And the first sign of trouble, well, that's it. It's fall for bankruptcy. So no, no, no. There's problems that come, right? Well, what about in the ministry, in the church, right? There's those people, right, that they come to church all excited, right? They show up for the battle. They take a look at all the problems that the enemy, that the enemy is coming against them, whatever. It's, oh, that's too risky. I'm out of here. And they run home. You never see them in church again, right? 
What about relationships, right? So you've heard stories like this, right? It says, hey, what happened to your boyfriend, Victor? Right? Uh, uh, oh, he was no good. I got rid of him, right? Well, how long did you date him? <laughs> oh, well, one day. <laughs> one day was all I needed, right, to find out that Victor was a no good, rotten, lazy bum, right? I got rid of him, right? I ran and got a new boyfriend. Oh, really? What's his name? His name is Victor. <laughs> I got another Victor, right? <laughs> Some people like Victor, right? <laughs> Did you know that some people are afraid of the weirdest things? I looked these up. These are some real, real phobias that people panic over these things, right? Real phobia. There's a phobia. Uh, I'm not going to say the name. I can't even pronounce it, right? But it's the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Anybody have that fear? <laughs> There's a fear that you'll be caught without your cell phone. We all have that, right? <laughs> we all have that. What? There's a fear of money. I don't have that one, right, right? There's a fear of the color yellow, that some people are just afraid of the color yellow. Some people are afraid of taking a bath. Yeah. There's a real fear. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> some people are afraid of the number eight. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> some people have a fear of balloons. Some people have a fear of clowns. Some clowns are really evil looking, aren't they, right? And they're supposed to be for kids, right? We've had a, we had a party one time and we had a clown and man the kids just started yelling and screaming. <laughs> they were so afraid. Hey, but it's for y'all. We paid a lot of money. Come yeah, here. They, they, they had they didn't want nothing to do with the clown, right? So some people have a fear of belly buttons. <laughs> That's a real fear. Some people <laughs> some people have a there, there's a joke in there, but I'm not gonna say it. Some people have a fear of mirrors. They they're just afraid of walking in front of a mirror, right? <laughs> and then some people, <clears throat> there's a fear of having fear. There's a fear of phobias. That every, I don't want to have. A, I don't want to be afraid of that. I don't want to be afraid of that. But there's a fear of having a phobia, right? There was this one guy, right, that he always wanted to. His lifelong dream was to uh, 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 to, to jump out of a plane to go skydiving, right? So he pays the money. He takes the lessons to go. You know, he gets an instructor and all that. He get they put on the parachute. They get him in a plane. They take him up thousands of feet. Right? Well, there's a whole group of them that they paid right to take this class to go skydiving. Right? And they're all in there. Right? And all of a sudden, the guy says, "Hey, <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> the door was open. The wind's flying and whatever." And the guy said, "No, no, no." And he said, "I want my money back." <laughs> and they said, "No, no refunds." You're here already. You're going to jump. He said, no, 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 no. I, I changed my mind, right? <laughs> but they went thousands of feet up in the air, and he, did, he didn't yeah. jump, right? But I would never make fun of people like that because I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> and I, right? I would never jump out of a plane. My brother David jumped. He was in the 82nd Airborne, and he jumped, and he says he's got the bad knees to prove it, right? That I could never ever do anything like that. The only worst, the only thing that could be worse for this guy that paid all that money and all that, right, um, would be is that he changed his mind after he jumped out of the plane. <laughs> Can you imagine him, you know, falling through the air and says, Wait, I changed my mind. I don't want to jump anymore. <laughs> and the instructor yelling, it's too late. <laughs> you already jumped, right? Pull the thing. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about how to overcome this greatest of fear, uh, the greatest thing in our lives, which is fear, right? That stops us from really living that good, abundant life, right? That thing that is just, it's there. It's a problem, right? So how, how, how do you overcome fear? How do you overcome fear? Does anybody know? Courage. You know that guy, Lot? <laughs> Lot loves the Wizard of Oz. We see that movie once a week, pretty much. <laughs> right? But you overcome fear with courage. That's how you do it, right? Just like, uh, remember in the rock, paper, scissors game, right? Like, rock crushes scissors. Courage crushes fear. That's because, think about this. Fear is a feeling. But courage, it's an attitude. It's an attitude that will lead to action. That's the difference, right? Let me say that again. Fear is a feeling. It's natural. It comes automatic to us, right? So a snake pops up and, ah, oh, you know, you, you get, you're you afraid, right? I hate spiders and snakes, right? But it's natural. It's a feeling, though. But courage, it's an attitude that you can have that can overcome 
that fear. And then it's going to lead you to take action. Someone has said this. I like this quote. Someone has said that courage is fear that has said its prayers. I like that, right? So what are you afraid of? The first point I want to take a look at this morning is that courage is essential for every single one of us. Every one of us that's a, that's a believer, courage is essential for us to live our daily lives, right? In the first chapter of Joshua, right, and we're going to look at verses 6 through 9, God speaks to Joshua about courage so that he could carry out his mission. Joshua, if you're going to do this, if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to take the people into the promised land, if you're going to complete your mission, you got to have courage. And that's exactly what God is saying to you and to me this morning, right? Let's take a look at that. Joshua 1, 6. Look at Joshua 1, 6. And look at what the Lord says. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to their forefathers to give them. God tells them, be strong and courageous, Joshua. You're going to be the leader. You're going to take these people and you better get your act together. There's no, be, oh, I'm afraid. It's no, I changed my mind. I don't want to jump anymore. God is telling them, you got to have courage, right? God's call on Joshua's life was to lead the Israelites, right? Out of the desert and into the promised land. God's call on your life also involves moving in some aspect from point A to point B. Think about that. Joshua's call was to get the people from the desert and into the promised land. The land that flows with milk and honey, right? The land of abundance, right? In our lives, God is saying, I want you to move from point A to point B. Maybe God is calling you to take your family from where they are now to where they need to be closer to God, closer to each other, more committed to God, and more committed to one another. Some of us walk around, well, you know, I, 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 I'm committed to God, but only on Sundays. Two. What about the rest of the week, right? Well, my family, well, you know, they, they, they're committed to God, but we're not that close, you know. <laughs> we're not, how can you be not close to your family? You live with them, right? It's like, <laughs> you got to be close to your family, right? If you're alive, if you're going <laughs> to, in your life, if you're going to get to where you need to be, you got to have courage along the way. you got to have courage along the way. Why do you need courage? Well, because there's going to be challenges in your life, right? There's going to be obstacles that you need to overcome. There's going to be times when victory doesn't seem possible, right? When you got two sick kids, everything's falling apart, right? That, you know, uh, uh, my, I ran out of gas, right? My, my cell phone got lost. I don't have my cell phone, right? It's like, man, everything's going wrong and victory does not seem possible, right? There's going to be days when it seems like, you know what? I'm just going to quit. I haven't drank one beer in 38 years. But this week... <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm going to go drink a beer. No, no, no. It, it seems easy, but don't, don't do that, right? You're going to have to have courage, right? There will be days when you're going to feel like you're all alone. Where's God? How come this is happening to me? Nobody nobody from the church is coming. Nobody's there to help. No, man, you know what I mean? You feel all alone, right? When you get serious about moving your life forward, right? About personally getting serious with God, relationally and spiritually getting serious with God, you'll find that fear has a way of creeping in <laughs> and trying to stop you, right? <laughs> you have to decide now, right, that you know what? I'm going to choose courage over fear. <clears throat> Point number two. Let's take a look at that real quick. Courage is a choice that you make. Did you ever think about that? Some people say, well, I... I I don't have courage, you know. <laughs> no, it's a choice. You can choose to have courage or not, right? It's up to you. In verses 6 through 9, we're going to read those in a minute, but there's three times, three times in these 6, 7, 8, 9, in these four verses, right? God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. And he repeats it again. Be strong and courageous, Joshua. And he repeats it again. Be strong and courageous, Joshua. So where does courage come from? Well, some people think that it comes at the bottom of a bottle of alcohol, 
a bottle of whiskey, right? You, you know how it is. If you give a Mexican a little bit of alcohol, right, they think they can take on the world, right? You might be just a timid little Mexican guy walking forward, you get a few beers and you, you, you're ready to fight anybody, right? Give me the biggest guy in the room, right? I'll take him on, right? <laughs> you watch what you say, right? <laughs> With a little bit of alcohol in us, that's the way we are as Mexicans. That's the way we are, right? Get a little bit of alcohol and we think we can take anybody on, right? Well, some people think that courage is the same kind of emotion as fear, that it's just the opposite, but that's not, right? Remember, fear is just a feeling, right? We don't experience courage the same way that you experience fear. Courage is an attitude, an attitude that will lead to action. That's why God told Joshua so many times, right? Be strong and courageous, Joshua, right? Because courage is a choice. And Joshua could choose to be courageous or not, right? It's not like God is not telling Joshua, Hey, Joshua, I want you to be nine feet tall. <laughs> Joshua, Joshua, I want you to be left-handed. He said, Joshua, Joshua, I want you to be a Mexican. Jesus. God didn't say that, right? Those things are natural. You can't change how tall you are. You can't change whether you're right-handed or left. Some people can, right? Some people are that good. I remember Brother Felix Castillo. He was a boxer. He, he would... He could box both ways, right and left, man. And he was good at both, right? <laughs> about being Mexican, you can't change your race. You can't change who you are, right? That's who you are. You can't change that, right? These are things that are out of our control. You're either left-handed or you're not. You're either Mexican or you're not, right? But God tells Joshua, be bold and courageous, Joshua. It's a choice. It's not a feeling. It's an attitude. Any of y'all ever seen the movie Proof of Life with Meg Ryan and Russell Crowe? Proof of Life. It's, it's a pretty good movie, right? It, it's a movie about a woman whose husband has been kidnapped in a country in South America somewhere, right? And Russell Crowe is this uh, hostage negotiator, tough, you know, ex-Green Beret guy, tough guy, right? He's really, really tough guy, right? And he's helping her to get her husband back, right? And they go through a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of uh, 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 things that are going on, bluffs and threats and... and, and and ultimatums and Russell Crowe seems like he has a, a ice in his veins he's just tough tough guy right and finally at the very end towards the end of the movie right they say you know we can't get your husband so we're gonna have to plan a military type rescue we're gonna have to go in and get your husband right and then the team his team is getting ready and, and she could sense that Russell Crowe has a little bit of there's a little sense of, of, of fear in him right and she goes up to him and she says hey uh, in all this time, everything that we've been through, I've never seen you afraid. And Russell Crowe looks at her and he says, Oh, yes, you have. Because all those other times, I was afraid, you know what I mean? But I chose to be courageous. I chose courage. I chose to go on. I was afraid. And you saw me. He said, but I chose to have courage. He knew the difference between fear and courage, right? There's this guy, Ambrose Redmond. I don't even know who he is, but he was for the guy from the 60s, a beatnik from the 60s. But look, I like the way what he said what courage is. He said, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Did you get that? Courage is not the absence of fear, because fear is there. It's natural. It comes to us, right? A snake comes right in front of you. It's natural to be afraid. But then you could be like, uh, who's the alligator, hunter guy, <laughs> and just jump on top of that snake and Steve no, no, Irwin. Steve Irwin. He, uh, he's dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He made the wrong choice, right? <laughs> well, think about this. You make hundreds of choices every day, right? You make hundreds of choices every hour, right? Someone has suggested that human beings, we make uh, uh, choices, we make 35,000 choices a day. 35,000 think about that right in the morning when your alarm goes off you make a choice am I getting up or not right <laughs> am I am I gonna hit the snooze but I don't sleep a little bit more right in the morning when you wake up you say well am I gonna eat breakfast or not and what am I gonna eat for breakfast right and then you decide well am I gonna brush my teeth or not I hope everybody brushed their teeth this morning right <laughs> you <laughs> You need to choose courage in your daily life, right? Because courage, it's a choice. And it's an attitude, right? It's going to lead to action, right? This should be our driving force 
behind our decisions, behind the decisions that we make on a daily basis, right? What are we going to do, right? Think about this. Satan uses fear against us. Satan uses fear to weaken your walk, to silence your talk. Zach Williams says he will rob your rest and steal your happiness. Fear is a liar, Zach Williams says, right? Fear is a liar. Satan will use fear. Think about this. Every day, certain, Satan tries to use the fear against us, right? He uses fear to tell you that you're not good enough to serve the living God. Satan will use fear to make you think that you're not strong enough to get into the fight. We're in a fight, whether you know it or not. We're in a fight against Satan, sin, and the world. It's a fight, and it's on. And Satan will tell you, you're not strong enough. Just give in. Satan will use fear to tell you that you're not worthy of God's love. Satan will use fear to tell you that you're not wanted by God. And Satan will use fear to remind you of the past and to trick you into thinking that you're a dirty, low-life, good-for-nothing. Think about that. That's what Satan wants to do to us. There's another song by Josh Baldwin. If y'all heard it, Stand in Your Love. And in that song he says, My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Fear does not stand a chance when we stand in the love of God. Amen. Think about that. God's power can break any fear that we have. Any fear. God's forgiveness makes you good enough to serve God, right? God's forgiveness is real and it's forever. Doesn't matter what the enemy will tell you, right? Well, you messed up again. Yeah, but God's going to forgive me again. I know he will. I just got to come and confess my sins before him, right? God's love makes you strong enough to get into the fight against the devil. We are not defeated. We are not defeated. The devil thinks right now in our country, in America, in the churches, in the across the country, he, the devil's having a field day. Man, he's tearing stuff up and he's going crazy, right? He thinks he has the upper hand. So he thinks. Just like he thought that he had defeated Jesus on the cross. But three days later, I can imagine Satan say, I got him. I beat him. He's dead. I got the Son of God. I killed him. He's dead. I won. Three days later, I said, oh, what happened? <laughs> Who rolled the stone away? Man, what's up? What's going on? Where's Jesus? Where's his body? And Jesus came back victorious, right? And he said, you thought wrong, Satan. Satan thinks he has the American church down against the ropes. So he thinks, right? The church of the living God cannot be defeated by the enemy. Jesus promised us that, right? We're his church, we're his bride. And we've read the book, we've read, we've read the end of the book, we win. Satan doesn't win. Amen. We win, we win. Think about that. God's love for you he loves you. It is so great, and it is forever. Yeah, but I messed up, man. You don't understand, man. I, I was I was coming to church, and I messed up. No, no, no. God doesn't love me. No, God's love is forever. He loves you. He forgave you. His forgiveness is forever, and His love for you is forever. And God wants you more than you will ever know. Yeah, but God doesn't want me, man. I, I'm nobody. No, no. God wants you. He cares about you. Last point I want to take a look at this morning is that courage must be nurtured. And we're going to read verses 7 through 9 in a second, right? And like I mentioned earlier, fear comes naturally. It doesn't even take any effort. It just, it's natural. It's automatic. It's an automatic emotional reaction, right? Get me on a roller coaster and you will see fear, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's natural. It's going to come. Ah! You know, <laughs> Sandra and Sidas like to get on and they like to sit in the front, right? And they raise their hand. My brother David, too, this is crazy. I, I don't like roller coasters, right? Don't get me on a roller coaster, right? I'll throw up all over you, right? <laughs> courage needs to be developed. Did you know that you can make a habit out of courage? That courage can become a habit in your life. God spoke to Joshua, right? And told him, be strong and courageous. Let's take a look at that. Joshua 1, 7. Let's take a look at that real quick. Joshua 1. 7. 
Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Look at verse 8. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, right? Written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Let me share with you real quick three ways that you can nurture courage, that you can build it in your life, right? The first one, follow courageous examples. Do you know people in your life that are courageous? If you do, you need to follow their examples. I don't know nobody. Everybody that I hang out with, they're a bunch of cowards, but you need to get new friends. Right? <laughs> you need to get new friends, right? Moses was an example for Joshua, right? God said to Joshua, do what you learned from Moses, Joshua. Follow his teachings. Follow his example. God reminded Joshua, right, that he needed to hang on to the lessons that he learned from Moses. And his leadership. I hope you know people that are courageous, that are in your family, in, in, in your friends, right? Take a look at how they react to challenges, how they react to obstacles. How have you noticed? Take a look at how they stand up to difficult situations or difficult people. Learn from them. Learn to do what they do, right? When you find a good example, right, somebody who's courageous, follow their example. This is why Paul, remember what Paul told the Corinthian church? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And the writer of Hebrews wrote this. Look at what the writer of Hebrews said. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Look at somebody who's courageous, who's willing to follow the Lord no matter what happens, right? Look for examples, the people around you, right? The second way that we can nurture our, 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 our courage is to get into the Word of God. Did you notice here in, in 7 and 8 what God told Joshua? Man, you got to get into the Word. You got to get into, you got to apply God's Word to your life. He tells him three things to do. He says, Joshua, I want you to speak the Word, right? Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Think the word. Meditate on it day and night. Do the word so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. You got to speak the word. Think the word. Do the word. That's the charge that God's telling us. If you're going to be courageous, if you're going to make it in this life, this is what you need to do, right? He's telling Joshua to immerse himself in the word of God. Joshua, you got to know my word. You got to speak it. You got to think it. And you got to live it. This needs to be natural to you. No matter where you're at or what you, you could be anywhere, man. Sometimes I'm at work and somebody will say something and I'm like, hey, hey man. And I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm not at church, right? It's like, I, I don't take it back, but I said it. But, you know, it's not the place, but I said it anyway, right? And so they look at me like, okay, he's weird. I, I am weird, all right? I am weird, right? <coughs> Think about this. The more of God's word you have hidden in your heart, the easier it is to walk in courage. The more you have of God's word hidden in your heart, the easier it'll be for you to walk in courage. Do y'all know the guy, David Wilkerson, who wrote The, the, the Cross and the Switchblade? He wrote the book. They even made a movie out of it. It's, it's good. It, he lived in New York, and he, he was there dealing. He was in gangs and all that, and then he becomes a Christian. He becomes a follower of Christ, right? And then now he's going out and going back and talking to the gangs in there in New York, and they're, they're tough, right? But he remembers when there was this one... One time when he was younger and he was in gangs and all that, a, 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 a bully was coming up to him. He had just become a believer, right? Young believer. And he remembers reading these words in Zechariah. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And this bully comes up to him, a bully from another gang, comes up to him, right? And, and David Wilkinson, all he could think of was that verse. And he said, you know what? You cannot defeat me. I'm going to stand on the word of God, right? God's word says that not by my nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He said, I'm going to trust that the Holy Spirit is going to help me, that's going to lead me, and, and, and he's going to give me the courage to stand up to this guy. And that guy left him alone. The Lord helped him out, and the Lord intervened, right? The Lord gave him the courage to move forward. Do you want the courage to face the unknown? 
or even the known, right? The unknown is, is tough, right? We, it's hard to have courage to face the unknown. But what about the known stuff? There's stuff that we know that, man, that's hard to face as well, right? Do you want the courage to leave the desert behind and to move into the promised land? The promised land, right? You've got to immerse yourself in God's Word. you got to read His Word. you got to know it. you got to speak it. Speak it. you got to think it. And you got to do it. That's how you nurture courage. The third way you can nurture courage is to put your trust in God. Look at what God said to Joshua in verse 9. Joshua 1, 9. Take a look at that real quick. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. That's the third time he tells him, right? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God is with you wherever you go. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you're at, if you're a believer, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, God is with you. Remember we talked about that last week in verse 5, where God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Just a few verses later from verse 5, God is repeating that promise again to Joshua. Joshua, I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Yeah, God, but you don't understand, man. I just got laid off from my job. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Yeah, God, but you don't understand, man. My friends are giving me a tough time. No, I'm going to be with you wherever you go, right? God repeats this because he wants Joshua to remember that he's going to be with him. He wants the people of Israel to remember that God's going to be with him. And he wants you and he wants me to remember that he will be with us always, 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 right? From the time you open your eyes to the time you lay your head down on your pillow. And during the night, while you're sleeping right all night long, God is right by your side. Everywhere you go, He's there. You know what that means? It means that nothing's going to happen to you that you and God cannot handle together. Amen. Even in the battles, even in the difficulties, even in the darkest moments, God is right there Amen. beside you. And knowing that he's with you, think about that. That gives you courage, right? <laughs> if you're going to go out and you're going to get in a fight, you don't bring your smallest friend, right? <laughs> you bring your biggest, toughest friend, right? And that's going to give you all the courage in all the world, right? I remember in, in, in junior high, I was at Page Middle School, right? And I was in the seventh grade, and there was this guy, his name was Fire. They called him fire. He was a big, big guy. He was way bigger than me, man. Big. I mean, like this wide, this tall, and right. And uh, they called him fire, man, because he had. Remember those bell-bottom pants, and people yeah. used to put stuff on their on their pants and put trend around. The, anyway, you remember those, right? The hippie type stuff, right? And he had flames of fire, right? And everybody was afraid of him, right? And then one time, me and my friends were talking, and I'm like, hey, man, I'm gonna go stand up to fire. I said, but I want y'all to come with me. <laughs> all my friends, all 10 of us went. <laughs> I said, y'all be here. I'm going to start the fight. And uh, um, if he starts getting the best of me, then y'all better jump in. And all my friends, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, man. We're with you, right? And sure enough, I went. And I had to jump up in the air to punch to punch fire in the face, right? I punch him in the face, and then fire just grabbed me. <laughs> and bah, bah, bah. And I'm like, help! <laughs> All my friends jumped in, and the poor fire got the worst of it, right? But and, uh, I feel sorry. I hope I never run into him now, right? <laughs> poor fire, man. He got the beating of his life. Just because I had my friends. Think about it. When God is on your side, when God is with you, I wasn't afraid of fire, even though he was this wide, this big. I was not afraid of him. Because I knew that my friends had my back. When God is on your side, who are you to, who's there to be afraid of? You can throw you 10 fires and come on fire, come at me if you want, right? I'm not afraid because God is with me. And I have the courage to face the future, to face my present, to face a hundred enemies. It doesn't matter. God is on my side. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? So what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of tomorrow? Are you afraid of yesterday? <laughs> I'm afraid of today. No, 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 no. I'm afraid of the known. I'm afraid of the unknown. I'm afraid of success. What if I get too famous? What if I get too rich? <laughs> it doesn't happen to us, right? We're not afraid of that. What? What? If, are you afraid of failure? Man, if you know, uh, uh, I, I'm just not making it, man. I, I can't even pay my bills. I can't do this. I can't do that. Are you afraid of criticism? 
Yeah, they're canceling everybody now, left and right. And I always say, hey, they can cancel me all they want. I don't have a Facebook account. <laughs> I don't have anything, right? That's why I say it's easy. Cancel me. I got nothing, <laughs> right? Cancel me. Are, are, are you uh, 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 afraid of pain? Maybe you're going through an illness, a sickness. Are you afraid of defeat? Are you afraid of disappointment? I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Right? Remember, fear is a natural reaction. Fear is natural to difficult circumstances. It just comes, right? But it doesn't have to hold you back, right? We all feel afraid now and then, right? The good news is, is that we don't have to let fear get the best of us. We don't have to, right? Mark Twain said this. He said, courage is the mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. We need to learn to master our fears and say, you know what? I'm afraid right now, but I'm going to trust in the living God that he's going to help me. And we need to let him know, God, I'm afraid. I don't know how to handle this, God. I don't know what I'm going to do. But you said that you are with me. I don't feel you right now. I feel alone. But you said that you are with me. And you are not a liar, God. And I'm going to trust in you, God. I'm going to hold you to it, God. And God's going to say, yes, I am with you. You can hold me to it because I am with you. Remember, fear is just a feeling. But courage is an attitude. I want you to remember that courage is an optional right it is not optional it's necessary for anyone who wants to experience the fullness of god's blessing in your life you've got to have courage and it's not automatically courage does not come automatically it's a choice that you have to make and courage doesn't come naturally you got to nurture it you got to build it up and the more you do it the easier it's going to get when you need the courage <laughs> Say, okay, I, I got through that last one. Courage, the Lord helped me and gave me the courage to get through that one. And the Lord's going to help me and give me the courage to get through this one, right? Fear can keep you stuck, right? You can be stuck in the mud. Don't let it happen to you, right? Today, say from now on, I'm going to choose courage. I'm not going to let these fears hit me. Not with my health, not with my family, not with my kids, not with my future, not with anything. I'm going to trust in the Lord, and I will be courageous.